For our second lesson in 12.1, we're going to be looking at 12.1b, which is on more Pythagorean theorem. And our goal for this lesson is to learn to apply the Pythagorean theorem to some real, real life scenarios. So nothing really new uh, as far as terminology or notes go, uh, but we do just want to take a look at a few examples and see how the Pythagorean theorem can be used in some different real life situations. So let's take a look at our first example. For our first example, we have more of a word problem. It says the longest side of a right triangle measures 17 feet, and one of the shorter sides of the right triangle measures 8 feet. What is the length of the third side? In this situation, we don't have a picture or a diagram to help us out, so what we need to do first is actually go ahead and draw ourselves a right triangle with sides represented by 17 feet and 8 feet. Now the key piece of information that we need to recognize from the problem is they say that the longest side is 17 feet. Well from our definition yesterday we remember that the hypotenuse is going to be the longest side of our right triangle. So that tells us that our hypotenuse measures 17 feet, meaning that one of the legs must measure, must measure 8 feet. So when we draw our diagram, let's keep that in mind when we actually, actually go about drawing. So the orientation of a right triangle doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to go ahead, draw a right triangle. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we need to put the square in the corner to, re <clears throat> to represent the right angle. Again, we said the hypotenuse is going to be 17 feet. Well, this side here is not one of the sides that forms the right angle. It's the longest side. So that's going to be our 17 foot length side. So that apostrophe means is a symbol that we use for feet. So that's 17 feet. Next, we want to label 8 feet on our diagram as well. So I'm going to put my 8 foot length on this side here. So now I'm trying to find the length of this missing side here. Well, we know that's what's going to be one of the legs. I can label that either A or B. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use B. And so now our Pythagorean theorem we know is going to be A squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now we need to substitute our values from our diagram into our triangle. I'm going to substitute 8 in for a and 17 will get substituted in for c. So when we rewrite this we're going to get 8 squared plus b squared equals 17 squared now we should have 8 squared memorized. That's going to give us 64. So 64 plus b squared is going to equal, if you don't have 17 squared memorized, that's okay. You can use a calculator for that. Earlier in the year I expect you to memorize up to 15 squared. So 17 squared is okay to use a calculator on. 17 squared is going to give us 289. So now what we want to do is we want to subtract 64 from both sides. And we get b squared equals 225. Scroll up a little bit. Now what we want to do, square root both sides. So the second, so the square root and the second power cancel. We get b is equal to square root of 225 is going to give us 15. So this missing side of the triangle is going to measure 15 feet. Okay, you can use an apo I'm okay with using an apostrophe to measure to represent feet. Uh, an apostrophe is feet. Quotation mark is inches. Just so, so you guys are aware of that if you didn't know. Uh, quotation inches apostrophe is feet, or you can just write out feet. Okay, so the length of side B would be 15 feet. All right, let's take a look at another problem where we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Example 2 says the pro football field is 100 yards long. That's from end zone to end zone. Uh, we're not including the end zones, but uh, the playing field is 100 yards long, and it is about 53 yards wide. It's actually 53.3 .3 repeating, um, but we're just going to round that to 53. So what we want to know is what is the length of the diagonal line from corner to corner. 
Now we should know that a football field, if you don't know, a football field is in the shape of a rectangle. So let's go ahead and draw a rectangle. Okay, so there's our rectangle, and we know that it's going to be 100 yards long. And it's going to be 53 yards wide. And what we want to determine is the diagonal line that goes from corner to corner. So that's what we're trying to figure out. Well, if you look at that shape now and ignore the bottom left-hand side, we have a right triangle. Going from here down to here, back up and over, that gives us a right triangle. Now the information that we have, this side and this side, those two sides make up the right angle, meaning that this length here is going to be the hypotenuse. Now we're going to be dealing with some larger numbers here, so again, find to use your, find to use your calculator. But we're going to start with our Pythagorean Theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we're going to substitute our values in for a and b to solve for the length of the hypotenuse, which would be size c. So we have 53 squared plus 100 squared equals c squared. Now we should know the length of this diagonal is going to be greater than 100 but it's going to be less than 153. Okay, so somewhere between 100 and 153 should be the total length of our diagonal, of our hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and square these numbers. Um, I'll be honest, I know this, I know 100 squared off the top of my head is um, going to be 10,000. 53 squared though, not too sure on that one, so I'm going to use my calculator for that one. So when we square that, we get 2,809, 2,809 plus 10,000 is going to be equal to c squared. Pen's not working well today. So 2,809 plus 10,000 is going to equal c squared. Add those together and we get 12,809 equals c squared. Alright, 12,809 is equal to c squared. Now, to find the value for c, we're going to square root both sides. Square root here and here or cancel here and here, and we have c is equal to, now again, go back to our calculators, find the square root of 12,809, and when we do that, we get 113.17. I'm going to round it to the nearest tenth to get 113.2. 113.2, and we remember our label is yards. So from one, um, it's called a pylon, where it separates the playing field from the end zone, so from one pylon to the opposite corner pylon, it's going to be 113.2 yards is the different distance between those points. So when you see those guys diving for the end zone with the ball extended, and they're reaching for that little orange rectangle that's sticking up in the air, that's called a pylon. So from pylon to pylon, it's 113.2 yards. Let's take a look at one more example for this lesson. For our third example, Let's say that you're at Menards and you find a cardboard box with the dimensions that are shown below. What is the longest baseball bat you could fit in this box? So what we're going to do is we're going to go from, let's say that we're going to go from this corner right here all the way up over to this corner here. Okay, so from this back left corner to this front right corner here, that's the distance that we're trying to find. Well, in order to do that, we need to first find the length of this diagonal line, and then that will help us find the length of this diagonal line, and you'll see that all in just a moment. So let's focus on finding this diagonal line first. So I'm going to draw in another line. All right, so I drew in my diagonal line, and I just want you to visualize the bottom of the box right now. And if you visualize just the bottom of the box, we recognize that there's a right angle right here, okay? So, we're just focusing on this triangle here. It's not a right triangle on our paper on my iPad, but if you were to visualize the box in real life, and that is actual three dimensions, 
we realize that from opposite corners of the bottom of the box that is going to give us a right triangle. Now here's the thing that we have to remember. The length of this side here is the same as the length of this side here. So we have the length of this side is 12 inches. The length of this side is going to be 9 inches. We need to find the length of this side here. Okay, the length of this side here is going to be our value for the hypotenuse. So we're going to call that side C. Okay, so we're going to have our A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We're going to substitute 12 and 9 in for A and B. Doesn't matter which one goes where as long as neither of them goes in for C. Alright, so 12 squared plus 9 squared equals C squared. You could have 9 squared plus 12 squared instead doesn't matter. As again, as long as neither of them are substituted in for C. Now I go ahead and do my squares. 12 squared is 144. 9 squared is 81. Then equals C squared. Now when I add 144 plus 81 together, I'm going to get 225 is equal to C squared. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to square root both sides to find the length of C. So the square root and the second power cancel, we get C is equal to square root of 25, two, I'm sorry, square root of 225, that's actually one you should know, that's a perfect square. Square root of 225 is going to give us 15. So the diagonal of the bottom of the box is going to be 15 inches. Okay, so that's our first piece of information that we need. So I'm going to erase the yellow C that I have right here and write in my 15 inches that I found to be the length of, di of the diagonal. Alright, so I found the length of the diagonal going from this corner to this corner to be 15 inches. Alright, now what I need to do is I need to find this distance right here. And to do that, we still have another right angle. Again, we need to think of this in terms of three dimensions. So now going from our top corner here, top front, or top back left corner to our front right bottom corner. We have a right triangle there as well. This might be difficult to visualize, but I'm going to draw a line connecting those two points. There's my line connecting those two points. And now my third line looks like this. And now these three lines, the yellow and the two green lines, those are going to form another right triangle. So my yellow line I know is 15. I already know that the length of this side is 8, meaning the length of this side is also going to be 8. So I'm going to relabel this over here to give me 8 inches on that side. Now my next hypotenuse is going to be right here. I know the length of one leg of this bigger triangle now. This leg is going to be 8. And now what was the hypotenuse of the bottom is now a leg for this new triangle, okay? Originally, with this triangle, 15 was the hypotenuse. However, now we moved on to a different triangle. And the 15 is now the length of one of the legs. So we have a, length, a leg with length 15, a leg with length 8. Now we need to find the length of the hypotenuse right here. So we're going to go ahead and do the Pythagorean Theorem again, using 8 and 15 for our, the lengths of our legs. So we have 8 squared plus 15 squared equals c squared. Do our squaring. We should know what these are. 8 squared gives us 64. 15 squared gives us 225. That's equal to c squared. 64 plus 225 is going to give us 289. And this is actually one that we did in an earlier example. I think example 1, we already found this. We're going to square root both sides. Square root and second power cancel. And so c is equal to 17 inches. All right, square root of 289 is exactly 17. Now, some of the problems when you do the square root, you're going to get a decimal. Some of the problems when you do the square root, you're going to get a whole number. 
For the problems where you get a whole number, that's because it's called a Pythagorean triple. And there's a bunch of those. Um, and I'm probably going to give you a list of those in a, ne in a later lesson. Uh, just because we don't, uh, we're running short on time and we don't need that for this lesson necessarily. All right. Anyway, the length of the bat that you could fit in the box, the longest bat you could fit would be 17 inches long. Okay. So that's our look at 12.1b, learning more about the Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully, you're now able to apply the Pythagorean theorem to some real life scenarios. Make sure to write down any questions or concerns or comments that you might have so we can discuss them in class tomorrow.